Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about interaction terms. So just uh, to set the context up here, suppose you're trying to run a regression with two variables. One is gender. Let's just say that's a, uh, whether you're female or not. One if you're female, zero if you're not. Uh, and two, x. the second variable is the number of hours you studied the month before your GRE exam or something, and why is your eventual GRE score, right? So now, the typical way you'd think to estimate this is a simple, you know, y equals beta 0x uh, plus beta 1x1 plus beta 2x2, right? Simple enough. And let's say you run that regression and you get these numbers uh, for your estimates. So now, how then do you interpret these? Well, again, so the way to think about this is uh, how do we predict a hypothetical person's score who is a male, let's say. So if you're a male, your predicted score, what is your predicted regression line? Well, let's just see what happens. Well, if all we know about you is that you're male, well then that means that your value for the x1 variable is zero, right? Because x1 is going to be zero if you're male and one if you're female. And so if you have an x1 value of zero, and we're not giving any info about your x2, which is how many hours you studied. But if all we know, if we just said, what is this regression line? What is this specific regression line simplified to if we just restrict it to males? Well, then what you're doing is you're plugging in 0 for x1. So this becomes y equals 140 minus 10. And then you plug in their x1 of 0, all right, plus 2x2. OK, well, let's simplify this a tad. Uh, 10 times 0 is 0, so this is just going to be 140 plus 2x2. Huh, okay, so let, let's think about what that means. That means that if we were to graph this out, for example, where x, the x-axis here is the hour studied, your x2 variable, and the y-axis here is your GRE score, but this equation, this y equals mx plus b, if you will, has an intercept of 140 and a slope of 2. All right, so this blue line over here has an intercept of 140 and a slope of 2, right? Okay, so we could even interpret this as if you're a male, for every extra hour that you studied, uh, your GRE score goes up by 2 points, and if you don't study at all, your score is 140. All right, cool. Now, what if you are female? Well, then if you're female, let's say, uh, then the only thing is uh, different is that your X1 variable has a value of 1 instead of a value of 0. So if you plug in 1 for x1, this simplifies to y equals 140 minus 10 times 1, because that's your x1, plus 2x2. All right. Notice if you specifically wanted to predict the GRE score of a female who studied for 18 hours or something, you'd then also plug in 18 for x2. But for now, we're just not commenting on what their uh, hours study does. So what happens though is this simplifies to negative 10 times 1 which is just negative 10. So 140 minus 10 is 130. So this regression line is 130 plus 2x2. All right. So if you're female your predicted GRE score is 130 if you don't study at all and your slope is still 2. All right. Uh, for every hour that you studied. Okay, now is it just like, wow, pure coincidence that the two, the two groups have the same slope, that for every hour you studied, your score goes up by two points, and that maybe if we collect different data that we'd get something different for the slopes? Well, the answer is actually no. By construction, the way we specified this regression, you're forcing the two groups, males and females, to have the same slope, meaning the same you know, treatment effect, if you will, for every uh, hour of studying. So is there a way then to specify your regression where you're being flexible, where you're allowing for maybe males and females have a different slope, meaning a different effect of studying on their scores? Who knows, right? So that's where interaction terms come in. Interaction term is a very simple concept, but essentially it's a way to make your regression more flexible to allow for slopes to vary for uh, different groups of people, for example. That's one use of interaction terms. So how then can we do this? So here is how we can specify the regression so that we're allowing for 
differences in the slopes for these two groups. If our regression instead is this, y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 and then x3, but our x3, this new variable that we're creating, we don't even need to collect any more data, but this new variable that we're creating is literally just going to be x1 times x2. So if we were looking at our Excel sheet, if we've collected a bunch of data where we have our x1, our x2, we have our y variable, what we're essentially doing is whatever these numbers are, we're just multiplying them to create this x1 times x2 column. So we, didn't need to go, we do not need to go out there in the world and collect more data. The data that we have, uh, we could use that to just create this extra column, this new variable called x1 times x2. Again, you could call it x3 if you want. Um, if you're using Stata, you could just say gen x3 equals, and then whatever your x1 was times x2, so x1 times x2, or if you label them as female and hours, just female multiplied by hours equals x3 or something. So that creates this new column, this new variable. All right, so now what's the point of specifying it like this? Well, and now I'm going to be a little bit more abstract so that we can generalize. Uh, so instead of plugging in specific numbers that we got from the regression, just imagine if, if, it's, if this is too abstract for you, just imagine that there's a specific number for each of these four, okay? So imagine there's a specific number if this is a little bit confusing, but you know, if not, that, uh, you know, uh, follow along. So let's now do the exact same exercise that we just did. What is the predicted y equals mx plus b for males? Well, if you're a male, then your value for the x1 variable is zero. So if all we're doing in this regression is plugging in x1 equals zero, well, let's see what happens. Well, if x1 is zero, this term is zero, so you're predicted, by the way, notation-wise, there's a point on notation. Whenever you're writing the notation for a predicted y variable, uh, you put a little hat in front. So we would say our y hat, our predicted uh, GRE score, not the actual observed GRE score, for a male is beta zero plus beta one x one, and again, if you're a male, your value for the x1 is 0, because it could only be 0 or 1, but it's 0 if you're not female, plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3, and then this guy, x1 times x2. Well, we already know x1 is 0 if you're male, and then times x2, whatever it was for that male, however many hours they studied. We don't know. We're keeping that open. But all right, now let's simplify this. This underlined beta 1 times 0 is 0 because it's going to drop out because anything times 0 is 0. And same with this last term, so that's going to drop out as well. Uh, so it's sort of like these two terms, anything with the next one in it, th these two terms get turned off because when you're male, it's, you have a value of 0, so 0 times anything is 0, so these two get canceled out. So what that means is your regression line, if you're male, is just going to be y equals beta 0 plus beta 2x2, right, because these two terms got multiplied by zero, have a zero tied in, so beta 2x2. All right, so that's your predicted regression line if you're a male. And again, if we have specific numbers in there, you know, if this, if when you predicted this regression, if this was, uh, you know, let's just, uh, let's do that now just so that we have that uh, available for, to make it more concrete. So let's say that when you predicted this, that your regression line was that data output of this to be y equals 140 minus 8x1 plus uh, 3, let's say plus 2x2 plus 1.1x1x2, 1 .1 x1 right? Or technically, yeah. Cool. All right, so, okay, so if we have this, what does this mean? This means that when you plug in 0 for x1, that these two terms drop, and so your y equals mx plus b just simplifies to 140 plus 2x2, right? So this, which in this case is going to be 140 plus 2x2, okay? 
So what's that going to look like graphically? Well, graphically, that's going to be 140 is the intercept, and the slope is 2, right? So this is if you're male, your GRE score and the hour studied. Intercept of 140, slope of 2. Okay. Now what about if you're female? If you're female, well then, let's see what happens. If you, we now plug in a 1, so if you're female, we're now going to plug in a 1 for... Let's just here is just this part of it. So if you're a female, we're going to plug in a 1 for your x1. So this is now going to be beta 0 plus beta 1 times 1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus beta 3 times 1 x2. And if we simplify this further, we get beta 0 plus beta 1 plus, and then this is beta 2x2 plus, and then this is beta 3x2. So if this algebra is too, you know, too abstract for you, uh, you know, that's fine. Let's just do it with the specific number, and then you'll see what the main point of that is. So here, these aren't crossed off now because we're looking at females. So if all we're doing in this green regression line is now, instead of plugging in x1 is 0, like we did when you were a male, we're plugging in x1 equals 1. So then this green thing simplifies now to this, 140 minus 8x1, which is 1, plus still 2x2, and then plus 1.1x1, which is just 1, and then x2. All right, let's see what happens. So our y hat for females is now going to be 140 minus 8, okay? So that's going to be 132. And this notice, two plus 2x2, two, 1 times anything is just that same thing. So this is still 1.1x2. So here we have 2x2 plus another 1.1x2, so that's going to be overall plus 3.1x2. But the point of all that is this, is that now the regression line for females compared to that of males, so this was for males, this is for females, now not only do they have a different intercept, but we're allowing for them to possibly have different slopes. So long story short, this last term, the one which was the product of x1 and x2, is called an interaction term. And essentially the, the interpretation of that beta 3 is that it's the difference in the slope between the two groups, between males and females. Because if you think about it, that beta 3 was 1.1, and that is the difference between the slopes. The slopes for males was just this 2, but the slopes for females was that 2 plus that 1.1. So now they have, an, you know, sure, they have a 132, a different intercept, but their slope was larger for females. It was 3.1 instead of just 2. So, you know, so now we're, we're not forcing the two lines to be parallel like we were in the first situation. So now just to recap all of what we've done, so in this y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x1 x2, this interaction term. So let's interpret all of these things. Beta 0 is literally just the y-intercept for males, right? Or again, if we're generalizing this, whatever group had x1 equals 0, right? So in this case, males were the ones with an x1 of 0. So that's the y-intercept for the males, right? The 140. The beta 1 is the difference in the y-intercept between the two groups. So in our example, that was negative 8 which means negative 8 was the difference between the intercepts. Remember the y-intercepts were 140 versus 132, so that difference of 8 is how we interpret this coefficient. So you can sort of think about it as all else equal, it's the difference between males and females if they study for 0 hours. But, and then this beta 2 is the slope for males, right? It's the slope for males, so you'd say for every extra hour of studying, that's the change in your GRE score. And beta 3, that's not the slope for females, but rather the difference in slope between males and females, right? So that's the difference in slope between 
males and females. So now, if you were trying to see if your hypothesis was, hey, I think that studying improves GRE scores the same amount for males versus for females. What you'd be doing is you're basically trying to check and see is beta 3 0 or not. So you do this regression, you'd have to create this interaction term, which again is one simple line of code and stata, gen x3 equals x1 times x2, and then run a regression with an x3. And then you would just look at the uh, value for that, and then you would check and see, well, is it significantly different from zero, right? Like you could look at the, the t-test for, for that row, and you would see, and if it's different from zero, well, what that means is there is a true difference, there is a difference between the slopes uh, for males and females. But if it's not, if it's close enough to zero such that the p-value is above 0.05, well, then that means that, hey, males and females on average have the same slope, and we were fine to then not include this and to assume that they are, in fact, parallel, and that for every hour of studying, your uh, score goes up by the same amount, regardless of whether you're male or female. So that's one use of interaction terms. Um, another sort of concept here, in the same sort of space of how can we sort of edit our usual y equals mx plus b linear regression to make it a little bit more interesting without having collecting more data, is nonlinear regression. So let's say you think that the relationship, so let's say you're looking at the relationship between uh, age and income. And, you know, let's say you're looking at a scatter plot and it's like, oh yeah, something like this. Okay. Now, it might be easy to look at this and say, oh yeah, you know, I guess this line of best fit will do. But, if you look carefully enough, you know what's even better than this fit is this sort of parabolic shape, right? Like, oh, it makes sense as you get older, your income goes up, but maybe at some point it starts leveling off, and maybe uh, it's even lower on average once you're uh, retired and you're only relying on Social Security income, and so income at some point might drop. And the inflexibility about linear MX plus Bs is that the slope can't change ever. So this, something that goes up and then goes down, there's a few different ways to model that, but the simplest one is just what's called a parabola or a quadratic equation. So where it's like y equals some number like you know you might you, if you're used to parabolas you might have seen this before don't worry if you haven't but y equals a ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's an example of a parabola where that same variable is included but also the square of that variable is included. Okay. So for that, if all, if you're the only income you have, you know, is uh, the only data you have is somebody's income and their age, all right, and then you just do a simple reg income age, that's just going to give you uh, a simple linear regression where it's income equals beta zero plus beta one times age, right? So that's just going to be that. And that's just a straight line. That's a y equals mx plus b thing. But what you could do in Stata is you could just do this generate. You could gen, generate. You could call it whatever you want. Age 2, for example, to represent age squared, equals age times age. Or you could even do age to the power of 2, something like that, right? So essentially, the point is that you don't have to go out there in the world and collect more data. You don't have to spend any more time or money. You could just create this extra column with the data you have and basically that's age squared and yeah whatever this number is if somebody's you know uh, 16 years old whatever 16 squared is is going to be that value right if somebody is five years old then 25 right so essentially without collecting more data you could just include uh, the square of your main x variable and then uh, you would specify it as now your regression is reg, inc, age, and then also age 2, or you know whatever you call that new variable that you created that's representing age squared. And now it's going to add this beta 2 age squared term. And now you basically have a parabola. And now this is going to be a much better fit. If you were to look at the r squared, it's probably going to be, if this is what the scatter plot looks like, it's probably going to be a much better r squared, a much nicer fit for this nonlinear regression than the linear one.